some people call me a terrorist and some people call me a hero and some people this when I'm neither one of those things. I'm just a guy that was trying to help somebody. Getting new information from sources tonight on this mysterious group of dissidents. They're very secretive. They want to bring down Kim Jong-un. Analysts say there is no doubt Kim Jong-un's regime has its operatives tracking members of this group all over the world, likely trying to kill them. My name is Christopher Ahn. Uh, I'm 42. No, I'm not. I'm 41. Yeah, I'm 41. Okay. All right. <clears throat> My name is Christopher Ahn. Uh, I'm 41 years old, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. A U.S. citizen accused of involvement in a raid on the North Korean embassy in Madrid has appeared at a Los Angeles court. Christopher Ott, who served in Iraq, faces charges that he broke into the North Korean embassy in Madrid and Spanish authorities want him back. They say the ringleader was this man, human rights activist Adrian Hong Chang. U.S. Department of Justice has issued a wanted poster for Adrian Hong Chang, calling the suspects armed and dangerous. There was a fork in the road for me. Pursue a, a more traditional career or trying to find some type of fulfillment for the soul. I met Adrian uh, around 2009. I had just gotten accepted into the University of Virginia's um, business school. And Adrian, at the time, he had you know, rescued all these different defectors and created this large national organization that was dedicated to supporting and raising awareness about the North Korean issue. When you meet any North Korean diplomat, uh, they're always traveling in twos. And the reason for that, obviously, is so they can keep each other in check uh, and so that they don't defect. Being a, a Korean American, uh, I'm very, very familiar with what's going on with North Korea. My mother was born on June 30th of 1950, a few days after the beginning of the Korean War where the North Koreans invaded Seoul. For our family in particular, patriotism was such a very strong concept in our house with Adrian. I found someone who cares even more than I do. That I said, look, you know, whatever it is that you need me to do, let me know. And if I can, you know, I, I, I will. 2017, I was traveling um, in the Philippines when the Kim Jong-nam assassination occurred. The half-brother of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was killed under mysterious circumstances on Monday. A warning for you, this CCTV footage we're about to show may cause some distress to some of you. The half-brother of the North Korean dictator died in an ambulance after complaining of dizziness. VX nerve agent found on Kim Jong-nam's face and his eyes. There is widespread speculation that North Korea is behind the murder. I was drinking some beers uh, on a, at a bar on a rooftop when my phone rang, and it was Adrian. He said Kim Jong-nam's son had reached out. Hi, uh, my name's Kim Han Sol, uh, from uh, North Korea, part of the Kim family. My father has been killed a few days ago. Assassins were now out to, to execute him as well. That his security guards had disappeared and that he was by himself. Him and his family were by themselves and they didn't know what to do. And they were asking for help. Adrian asked me, would I be willing to fly to Taiwan and meet um, Han Sol and his family there and keep them safe? And I agreed, I said, sure. Hansel and I spent two days together. When I looked at him, he wasn't, you know, the prince of North Korea. To me, he was a guy that just lost his dad. And he was trying to figure out what he was going to do um, to take care of his family. I told him that everything was gonna be okay. We walked over to the gate, um, you know, said our goodbyes, and, you know, I, I saw him off. And that's how we, we, we parted. The Han Sol rescue was somewhat of a catalyst. The North Koreans began to trust Adrian and understand what Adrian was trying to say and what he was trying to do. In early 2019, the embassy in Spain wanted to all defect. And so that would require far more coordination and people to, to help. These diplomats are elites in North Korea, and they were told that, this, that North Korea was the greatest place in the world. And yet when they go to the West, and they're in these different countries, 
They're able to see with their own eyes that their entire life was a lie. These are people who are, who are desperately trying to get out of a situation. And if I can help in any way, shape, or form, I feel honored to. It was a raid stunning in its audacity. A group of unidentified men infiltrated the North Korean embassy in Spain. As part of a plan to help Kim Jong-un's ambassador to Spain defect, but the diplomat changed his mind. Regarding with what happened in Madrid, you know, obviously this is still an ongoing uh, legal issue that I'm, I'm fighting with. But what I can say is that I came back to LA, the FBI calls me and said the North Korean government would actively be pursuing to assassinate me. It was imperative that I stay vigilant. So I call Adrian, he says, okay, we'll, we'll try to figure this out. A couple weeks after that, I drove over to his house, and when I got to his apartment, the marshals were already there. I thought it was a big misunderstanding. People just needed to talk to people, and then I'd be home for dinner. That night turned into three and a half months. The hardest part about jail to me was the punishment of just being away from my family. You know, when you're in jail, life stops, right? But the aftermath is just kind of splayed out all over my family. They're the ones feeling all the anguish and the attention and helplessness. Nobody knew any of the activity I was involved with. It was a big shock to everyone. I just continued to live my life. Oh yeah, well, you got a little bit of short time. Yeah, when I first got it, um, you know, it was really kind of depressing. You know, I mean, it still is, obviously. So it's a common thing, I think. People see something like this, and they're, 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 it's a constant reminder of, of this. And so you just try to do what you can. Good boy. Good boy. So I've been dealing with this now for about three years. You know, do I have any regrets? Would I do it all over again? I think the thing that I struggle with most, <laughs> I really just don't understand why I'm in this situation. And maybe that's naive. But to me, this, these people reached out because they didn't want to go back to a regime that could execute them or dictate how their entire lives were gonna be and the generations of, of, of families that they would have after them. And they wanted to escape that. And that's why I did what I did. And I just don't understand why I'm in this situation and why my, my decision to help people is ending up hurting so many people. It's hard for me to, to square that.